What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. It's heating up here in Iowa. Summer is officially here. Time to put away those cold water baits and talk about summer fishing. So today I'm going to be going over my top five lures for summer bank fishing. I just don't think bank anglers get enough love out there. So I do a ton of bank fishing. I like to share with you all what works for me. I'm no pro. However, I am certainly happy to share what I do, what I use to help any of you out there. So all the time I get people saying, you help me with this. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have thrown this bait and caught my PB. That stuff means the world to me. So thank you all. I'm glad my videos can help. Hopefully this will help. We're going to go over combos, lures, colors, and even some tips with each of the lures. So enough yapping. Let's get started. The first one happens to be my favorite lure to throw. If you've been around the channel for any amount of time, you probably know lure number one is a frog. If I really could pick one lure to catch fish on all day, it would be a topwater frog. Now, the frog seems to be th something that people either love or hate. I get a lot of people saying, I've thrown a frog for I don't know how long, I've never caught one on it. Hollow body frogs don't work. You know, I think people have this misconception that you know, the perfect frog in hole is full of slop and algae and slime and covered in pads. That's what you have to have to throw the frog. However, that is definitely not the case, and it really is a versatile lure for bank anglers. Now, the greatest asset to a hollow body frog like these right here is their ability to go anywhere. Whether you are in that slop, lily pads, grass, over wood, getting hung up with these is not easy to do. It's pretty dang hard. They're kind of the 4x4 four four of bass fishing lures, which makes them really safe for new anglers, especially fishing from the bank. Now here in the Midwest, once it starts warming up, we get a lot of lakes with grassy, slimy, overgrown stuff. So a frog like this is perfect for attacking fish top water. So a regular hollow body frog like this, I love to start with this early in the morning when those bass are actively feeding on those hot summer days, early morning and late at night is usually when they are gonna be most active roaming and actively looking for food. Now, as that sun starts to come up, they're gonna to go to the shaded areas. So whether that's under mats, you know, into the grass, wherever it is, shade lines, under trees, it doesn't mean you have to put the frog away. The frog still works perfect in those spots, under overhangs, under docks, along grass lines. Just because the sun comes up doesn't mean the half the half to frog. The frog has to get put away. So when it comes to colors, I honestly keep it pretty darn simple. The black frog, all black frog, really the belly is the most important. But usually you'll find an all black frog. The whole frog is that color, just like that guy right there. This has honestly been my go-to. Generally, I threw this or throw this overcast conditions, you know, cloudy, low light, but I've been throwing this in the middle of the day, again, in those shade pockets, um, under stuff, and the, the all black frog has really been my favorite. Now, an all white frog like this, some people argue that once the sun comes up, uh, you know, or if you're trying to target bass in a shad lake, uh, crappie, you know, bait fish, an all white frog like this does really well. Or when the sun gets high, when those bass get a better look at it, a lot of people think an all white frog does better. It's up for uh, you know your own interpretation. I've thrown both, I've caught fish on both. It's really what you're most confident in. Now, the third color is some sort of bluegill variation. This is a, a pop and perch, I think chartreuse, bluegill, something like that. I forget exactly what it's called, but something with some chartreuse, you know, something mimicking a bluegill, especially right now, post-spawn, when those bass are getting their revenge on all those bluegill that were harassing their little babies and fry. They're now up eating those bluegill that are spawning, the bluegill fry. Brain fart. Oh yeah, bluegill frogs do perfect now. Also, if you notice that bass are actively feeding on bluegills, so if you see up in those kind of the, the matty, patty, thick stuff, you hear stuff that sounds like Rice Krispies, great chance for those bass to be up there feeding on those bluegill, eating the stuff out of that algae and out of whatever's in there. It sounds like Rice Krispies. You'll know what I'm talking about as soon as you hear it, but perfect time to throw bluegill frog. Okay, when it comes to the combo, I personally like a heavy power rod. This happens to be a seven foot four heavy. This is that loose speed stick, like 80 bucks. So far it's done really well. I like a heavy power rod to get those fish out of the really heavy stuff. 65 pound braid on a reel of your choice. The biggest thing that I have to say is get something with an aluminum frame. It'll last a lot longer in the long run. If you go with, you know, a cheap graphite reel, once you set that hook, really, really hard on uh, you know a dozen or so fish. Good chance it gets out of alignment. Not always. You might have a good, uh, you know, a good reel that holds up, but in the long run, honestly, go with an aluminum frame reel because really frogging is one of the toughest things you can do to your gear. Now, if you're throwing a little bit smaller frog, something on the smaller end, you could drop down to a medium heavy rod, especially if you're not on the real thick stuff. Medium heavy will be fine, and you could drop down to 50 pound braid. 
I personally don't ever go below 50 pound, but that's the combo that I use. Now one tip for frog fishing is don't be afraid to vary your retrieve. Some days just a really slow, methodical, you know, a walking frog like this, pop, 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 you know, where it's either kind of chugging or just gently walking back and forth is perfect. Especially if there's not a lot of ripple on the water, a kind of a, a gentle, you know, regular motion will trigger those fish. Now other times if there's a little bit of chop on the water or you notice they're really aggressive chasing, you can see them actively chasing, work a little bit quicker, work a little bit harder, a little bit more splash and spit. Often that's the deal. Now, sometimes if you have a popping frog, I work something like that, you can see the mouth there, it's cupped. I'll work it just like a regular popper. Once I get by, uh, you know, a lay down or a little isolated brush pile, I'll work it slow, pop, let it sit for five seconds, pop, let it sit. Vary that retrieve, find out what the fish want and let them tell you by eating the lure. Okay, lure number two, my second way to target bass in the summer without a doubt is flipping and pitching around wood. So a Texas rig for me is undoubtedly lure number two. Now specifically a weighted Texas rig, uh, generally a quarter ounce or three eighths is what I go to when I'm bank fishing. Now you might be saying right now, wait a minute, a Texas rig, that's not a lure, that's a rig. I count it as a rig. If anybody's asking me, hey, what were you catching them on? I would say I was pitching a weighted Texas rig around brush, something like that. Again, the Texas rig is so versatile because it's weedless. You can see that rig right there. I've got that on an EWG hook, completely weedless. You can throw that up in wood, thick stuff, into grass. You can even punch, you know, light grass with something like this. Weedless, that's the key for bank anglers because the more you get hung up, the more you get snagged, the more you lose lures the more you just wanna go home and not fish. Okay, so for my choice of lures on a Texas rig, if I'm flipping really thick brush, so I don't just mean like regular wood, I'm talking about the gnarly stuff where there's not a lot of openings, you gotta get in there because when the summer hits, sun gets high, oftentimes you've gotta get in the very heart, the very middle of that bush to get that fish to eat. If you're pitching a foot out from that bush like this, they're not gonna go out and get it, but if you throw that right where it comes down, they're sitting in the middle of that gnarly stuff, they'll eat it, so that can be key. Number one, I like some sort of lure. Uh, I refer to them as beaver baits. Really, Reaction Innovations was the one that spawned the whole beaver deal. That's a Reaction Innovations Sweet Beaver. Now, the big thing about these is they don't have a bunch of appendages to get hung up on stuff. There's no cool, slippy action, no crazy tail on it. It's just that. A boring little lure, you can see it's very streamlined. Goes in grass, goes in really thick wood really well nothing to get caught on. That's my first deal. Another one would be a Missile Baits D-Bomb. Both of those are killer, great ways when you're attacking the real thick stuff. Then number two would be some sort of creature or craw bait. So if you're in a spot where it's kind of crawfish, you know, kind of rocky, kind of woody, uh, you know, something like this, uh, a rage craw, I mean a pack of craw, there's all kinds of craws on the market, even like this, what I was showing you earlier, that's the Reaction Innovations Kinky Beaver. So it's like a sweet beaver with craw legs and craw antenna that kick on the way down. Something with motion, uh, a pit boss, for example. Something that really flutters and kicks. You can still get these in and out of stuff. Uh, they don't get hung up too bad, and they've got that motion. A lot of times in the summer, bass, you know, they're cold water, cold water, cold blooded. Bass are cold blooded, so they regulate their body temperature depending on the water. As that water warms up, their metabolism warms up, they become more active. So oftentimes they're looking for something with a kick. Now, number three, arguably the all time best Texas rig in the middle of the summer, a big worm. That happens to be a 10 and a half inch zoom old monster, one of my absolute favorites. Eight inch, 10 inch worm is so hard to beat. Anytime you're around standing timber, Anytime you're in kind of eh, somewhat thick grass. Doesn't do great in that real heavy brushy stuff though. You know, the big long ribbon tail can get caught up and kind of be a headache, but sparse wood, anything like that, a big worm is hard to beat. It's a big meal. Bass are more apt to go after that big meal. You know, if they're gonna travel a little ways, they wanna eat a big thing, not, you know, some little inch worm thing deal. For colors, if you could go only one, green pumpkin is my color of choice. The dirtier the water goes, I go to a darker color, a uh, blacker June bug. The cleaner the water gets, the more natural and translucent I get. Something like a watermelon or a watermelon red flake in that real clean water, but those are so killer. Now for the combo, I'm gonna let the cover that I'm fishing dictate what I'm using. I was flipping and pitching heavy brush the other day with that thing, so I went with the heavy power rod. I like anything from seven to seven foot four, seven and a half foot for flipping and pitching. Uh, I'm six one, that's comfortable for me. This happens to be a heavy power rated for lures up to one and a half ounces. A regular medium heavy rated for lures up to about an ounce is kind of my all around do it all. So 
less wood, less cover, I would go to something like that. Now when it comes to the reel, I like something in the seven speed. This is the Shimano SLX XT. That's a 7.2 to one speed. And then I've got 20 pound of uh, P-line, I think, P-line fluorocarbon on here. Um, if you're not in the, the real thick stuff, anywhere 15 to 17, 20 pounds, somewhere in there, depending on what you like. Okay, lure number three, I'm going with a paddle tail swim bait. As bank anglers, we are often limited to a few spots to fish at the, the pond or lake you're at. You can't hit the whole thing. Usually there's only a few spots that you can actually access. So when it comes to a weedless, snagless search bait option, the paddle tail swim bait like that is really hard to beat. Okay, so color choices and styles. The first style is going to be that kind of all standard Kitek. You know, it's kind of got the ribs on it. There's a number of companies that make these. Kitek is kind of the, the benchmark. A lot of people love and use those. Uh, the uh, Strike King Rage Swimmer, that's another really popular one. One that I've been using is the Grande Bass Kickback Shad. It's a little bit thicker in the back end. The tail's a little bit beefier so it doesn't break off. I know that's kind of one of my and a lot of people's uh, deal with the Kitekses. They're great, great action. They look beautiful, but they just don't hold up one or two fish and you're often ripped and done with it. So for colors, I keep it really simple. I've kind of got three deals. One, kind of a translucent or a, a shad type-ish color. Uh, that can be, you know, opaque or translucent, but something that kind of looks like a shad for the shad lakes around here. Number two is going to be something kind of green pumpkinish, bluegillish. This is the electric shad, but it really works good to imitate like a young bluegill as well. What's Grande Bass call this? That's the ballistic shad, green pumpkin with kind of some orange on the belly. Great bluegill imitation. And number three is just something white, a white swim bait like that. That's the, uh, I think they call it bait ball, kind of like a silver on bottom, white up top. That does perfect. I love that color. So that's the way I go with like the Kitek style. But number two, you can see I've already got one rigged up here is the Beast Coast Miyagi. If you've been on my channel for some time, you know I love these. I caught my PB on this. This color right here actually is what it is. Dope gill, perfect bluegill imitation. The Miyagi is a little bit different. It's got a bigger tail, moves a little bit more water, but even at slow speeds, it does really well. That tail still goes and the body actually rocks, wobbles back and forth. So completely different look. Whenever you can be different from other people, sometimes that's the deal. If everybody's throwing a Kitek and the fish have never seen that, I think it does make a difference. So uh, the Beast Coast Miyagi, and last, probably my all around favorite to throw, if I can get them off here, the Reaction Innovations Little or Skinny Dipper. Skinny Dipper is the regular size, you can see that right there. One of my all time favorite in those is the Shiner color, kind of a brownish tan up top, white on belly. Killer, killer around here. Number two, this is the Little Dipper, the smaller version, that's their Sun Gill. So again, a bluegill imitation. My all around favorite to throw for these, and these work great for trailers, we'll talk about that soon, but um, you can throw them regular, you can throw them on a trailer. I absolutely love those reaction innovations. Now, when it comes to the combo, it's gonna depend on how big of a swim bait you're using and how heavy of a hook you're using. You wanna match it. So for example, this is kind of my thicker cover, bigger uh, setup here you can see on the Miyagi. This is actually a six aught, hopefully that's focusing, a six aught owner beast hook, thick, heavy hook. Um, this is a heavy power rod. It's kind of a softer heavy power, so it's not super, super stiff. It's got kind of a soft tip, but a heavier power rod, that's 50 pound braid on there. That's for the really thick vegetation. Now, if I was throwing, let's say, one of these little guys, just a little dipper like that. I'm only have, you know, a two, three out hook on there. Pretty light, say a quarter ounce, three out hook on that, running that through vegetation. I can get away with just a regular medium heavy power rod. So match it to whatever type of swim bait you're using anywhere from 15 17 pound uh, floral maybe even 20 if you're going real thick like this but uh, if it's real thick vegetation like that i'd go 50 or 65 pound braid just to be safe and if you're in really dirty water and you can get away with braid you can go with that but those are my recommendations on uh, the swim bait Okay, lure number four, sticking with the moving baits, I am going with a vibrating jig. Chatterbait, Thunder Cricket, there's a bunch of them on the market. Vibrating jigs are great here in the Midwest. Once the summer comes, we have either get you know a lot of rain and flooding here, that happens, the water gets really dirty. As the summer keeps going, we get algae blooms, so we can get a really green, cloudy water. Whatever it is, the vibrate is great for attacking that dirty water because of that vibration. A vibrating jig like one of these is great in sparse grass. You can kind of get it stuck in there and pop it free. Um, you can bounce it off rocks. The only real disadvantage to a chatterbait, and some people might say a swim jig is better, is you can go in real heavy you know, grass with a swim jig. You can go around wood with a swim jig. 
And I get that. Uh, you can't really throw the chatterbait around wood. They don't do well there. They do get hung up a lot. But the advantage to this is the drawing power and the calling power of that vibration. If I've got a really woody place, I just go back to that paddle tail swim bait. Okay, so for the colors on these, again, I'm keeping it simple. On uh, usually just regular dirty water, I'm going with like some sort of green pumpkin variation. So this is green pumpkin with some blue on the bottom, or one of my all time favorites, the Bee Height Delight. And honestly, I still think the Chatterbait Custom, these are only on Tackle Warehouse. These are the best bang for your money. Good components, it's got a good hook keeper, they rock. And they're not very much like six something. If you get them on sale, you can get them for like four bucks. So. The Chatterbait Custom is kind of my all-around go-to. I've been using the uh, the Strike King Thunder Cricket. These have impressed me. They're a little bit more pricey, but I really like them. They're very consistent. Uh, of course, you could go with the old Jackhammer. I only have a couple of these, 17, 18 bucks. It is really hard for me to justify spending that much, but I got a few just to try out. They do work. They're really consistent, but best bang for your buck, I think, is that Chatterbait Custom. Back to colors, I deviate, I'm sorry. Uh, some sort of green pumpkin variation for just regular dirty water. If you've got a shad lake or they're targeting bait fish, it's really hard to beat just an all white chatterbait, does great. And then of course, as that water gets dirtier, a black or a June bug, black and blue, black and purple, does great in the really dirty stuff. All right, now the combo for these guys, again, same rod length, seven to seven and a half feet. I like something, a medium heavy that's rated for lures up to about one ounce, but it's got a little bit softer tip. When you're looking at that, the action's gonna say moderate fast or kind of a slower taper. Depending on the company, they'll call it different things. But just test it out. Something that's got a little bit more bend in it. It's great for that chatterbait because it's not gonna vibrate the heck out of you. A little bit softer, uh, kind of dampens that a little bit. And a little bit softer rod. When those fish eat it, eat that chatterbait, it gives you just a little split second before you hit it, or feel it, and you hit that fish with the hook set. So a little bit softer, medium heavy. Of course, if you're in uh, Florida and the real thick stuff, you can go up to a heavy power rod, but for me around here, something like that does well. Now the reel, again, I like the seven speed. Again, that's that Shimano Scorpion. That's in a 7.4 to one retrieve uh, line, anywhere from 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, this is just 15, kind of my all around go to 15 pound fluorocarbon. If you're in the thicker stuff, bump it up or go up to a 50 or 65 pound braid if you're in the real, real, real thick stuff. Now, my tip for the vibrating jigs is try to get a reaction bite out of these. I know a lot of people just throw them out and reel them a foot under the surface and they're just reeling a constant you know, speed the whole time. With chatterbaits, if I'm around rocks, I'm trying to tick it and bump the tops of those rocks, kind of pull it up, get those fish to react. Uh, if I'm in submerged grass, vegetation, if I can keep it up over top of it, sometimes I'm letting it get down in there and rip it in. Or if you know it's kind of sparse stuff you're coming through, don't be afraid to rip it through when you kind of get hung up on stuff. Those are the times fish will eat it. They're going to react to it. It's kind of like a dog. If you're in your backyard, you can walk by a dog, doesn't do anything, but you run by it, it thinks you're playing or it you know, wants to eat you, whatever, and it chases you. It reacts to you. Same thing I'm doing with the chatterbait. Even in open water, I'll cast it out, let it sink down, I'll pop it up. Be real and let it sink down, pop it up, pop it up. Get those fish to react to it and part a little bit different action. Oftentimes, you'll catch a number of more fish. Okay, lure number five. You didn't think I was going to leave this out, did you? The old stick bait. Arguably one of the best bank fishing lures ever made. Heck, one of the greatest fish catchers ever made. There's some silly looking straight worm and they just, they catch fish. That's all there is to it. They catch fish. The real power of this simple lure is it's shimmy. There's not a lot of intimidating action to it. There's no strained appendages. It's just a straight worm-like thing that's easy for bass to eat and swallow. And on the way down, has this kind of tantalizing shimmy on the way down that fish just can't resist. Great for beginners because all you're doing with this is casting it out, letting it sink on slack line, popping it a few times, letting it sink. The bait's doing all the work for you. There's no crazy way to work it, you know, no strange rod actions. Throw it out, let it sink, pop it up, rinse and repeat. Now I like to Texas rig these for bank fishing. So instead of using a wacky rig where you'd rig it in the middle uh, with an open hook, some weedless hooks, I go with a Texas rig, you know, regular Texas rig, you weed it, weedless is what I was going to say. You rig it up at the top, put it back through so it's weedless. I've got videos on that. Tons of people have videos on Texas rigs if you're new to that. Heck, maybe I'll even do one. I can talk all day on weightless versus weighted versus peg versus what kind of lure. Let me know. Comment below and let me know if you'd like to do an all Texas rig uh, episode. Anyway, I like the Texas rig stick bait for bank fishing. Super weedless. You don't have to worry about getting caught up in stuff all the time. Again, remember... Keeping snag free is key from the bank. It can be so frustrating when you're bank fishing. So I try to keep that in mind when I'm picking lures and telling them all to you. And most of the time I'll go with a three or four-aught EWG hook for this, uh, like a five-inch or 
a six inch stick bait. Those are my favorites. Speaking of some of my favorites, how about some of my favorite styles? Well, if you're going with just this, like the regular stick bait style, I think the Bass Pro Shop Sticko is really hard to beat. Uh, it's affordable, it's not crazy expensive, has a good amount of salt in it and a good fall rate. It looks really good on the fall. Um, you know, the Yamamoto Cinco, that's like the gold standard, right? It's the best out there. Don't get me wrong, looks amazing on the way down, catches a ton of fish, but you catch one, maybe two fish on it and that bait's ripped up. Durability on them is not that great. So if you can afford them, absolutely. If you can uh, afford to get those, but I think uh, the Sticko is probably the best bang for the buck. Now my personal all around favorite stick bait, if you've been around the channel, you probably already know, the Reaction Innovations Pocket Rocket. It's different, it's larger. Let me show you here. That's the two side by side. This is more of like a five and a half inch, getting closer to that six inch stick bait, but you can see it's bulbous in the front and back. It's a heavier stick bait. So if you're somebody that struggles to throw just a regular five inch stick bait, uh, a weightless stick bait like this, bump up to this Pocket Rocket, it's got more weight casts very easy on a weightless EWG hook. You can also see it's got those little ribs on it. This has more movement. When this goes down and wiggles on the way down, it's got more wiggle. I personally like it for that. Uh, I just have more confidence in it. Find a stick bait that you like and stick with that. Now, when it comes to colors, some sort of green pumpkin variation. Tramp Stamp is one of my favorites in this. Payback is one of my favorites in this. Uh, Dirty Sanchez is one of my favorites in this. Their names on those kill me, but they're all variations of a green pumpkin. All around, I don't think you can beat green pumpkin for a stick bait. Now, as the water gets dirtier, gets a little bit cloudier, muddier, I'll go to a black or a black and blue. Again, the water gets clear. I'll go to a more of a translucent, natural, earthwormish kind of color or uh, you know, a watermelon red flake. Something like that that just looks a little bit more natural. Now when it comes to the combo, again, nothing spectacular. Just like the stuff I was talking about before, I'd go with a seven to seven and a half foot, medium heavy. Um, I always throw 15 pound fluorocarbon on just my regular weightless stick baits, and I go with a seven speed reel. Uh, very versatile combo. You can throw that for chatter baits, the swim baits, uh, those, your Texas rig. A medium heavy combo like that will do about anything you need it to. So. That's the combo I would throw for those. Now, a tip for the stick baits is make sure you always keep one rigged up on a separate combo. I'm a big proponent of bringing a few different combos with you when you go bank fishing. Uh, you know, a search bait, a Texas rig, and maybe a weightless uh, stick bait like this, even a frog. So if you're gonna bring four, that's how I would do it out of these. Now, the big reason why is because let's say you're fishing a frog. I'm up in the slop fishing it, comes up through a hole and blows up on it and misses it. Sometimes you can throw that frog five, six, seven more times and it won't come up after it. But if you have this weightless stick bait ready and you throw it up as what I call a follow-up lure, you throw a little weightless stick bait like that down in that hole where that, fr that fish is where you're trying to get it on the frog, seven out of 10 times, I would say, you're gonna catch that fish. It's there, it's waiting. It was just actively looking for that bait and missed it. It sees a little weightless stick bait drop through. Generally, they're gonna grab it. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it again. The follow-up is the deal. Keep one of these ready. That's my tip for these because they can save the day. All right, fishing friends, that's gonna round up my top five summer bank fishing lures again. The frog, the Texas rig, paddle tail swim bait, chatter bait, and of course, bringing up the rear, that old stick bait. Now, I know this is gonna be a long video. Comment below and let me know if you like these type of videos. Just kind of doing tackle talk. These are some of the most uh, common questions that I get from people. Hey, I'm doing a, a pond fishing session. I can't catch anything. What can I use? Or I'm struggling in this lake. It's got this kind of clarity, this, that, and the other. What lures can I throw? I know people like this stuff, so comment below and let me know if you enjoy these type. I can certainly do more, but I appreciate all of you now, especially Joe DeSando. You are the subscribe fishing friend today. I thank you for commenting and watching my vids. Everybody else, of course, I appreciate all of you. So thank you all for watching. It is late. I got to drink some more coffee because uh, I'm trying to stay up and get these done, but I'm going to get that done. Thank you all for watching. You'll see this tomorrow, and uh, until next time.